What is pattern matching? Pattern matching is a way of defining functions by matching the patterns of the inputs or by matching its cases, right? So it's essentially like a switch statement. It's like saying, well, for case one, do this. For case two, do that. You can also think of it as like an if statement. It's like saying, well, if the input is like this, treat it like this. If the input is like that, treat it like that sort of thing. So why do we do it? Well, first off, it's concise when done correctly, and it's very readable when done correctly. Now, this is an example where neither of those things are the case. However, it demonstrates what pattern matching is, I feel. First off, this is the function type definition. This is a curried function, meaning it takes multiple arguments, but one at a time. Um, if you want to know more about curried functions, I have a video on it, which I'll link below. But for the first pattern, or the first case, it's saying, well, when the first input is true and the second input is true, then the output is true. And then for the second case, it's saying, well, when the first input is true, but the second input is now false, the output is false. And then likewise, when it's false and true, it's false. And when it's false and false, it's false. There's a much better way of defining the logical and, and I'll show you that later. Now let's have a look at some examples, right? So for the examples, I'll be showing you three logical operators because I think these are good ways of showing pattern matching. So first off with logical not, logical not basically just inverts the output, right? If you pass it true, it returns false. If you pass it false, it returns true. Let's have a look at the pattern matching definition of this function. Great. So again, this is the type definition. It takes a Boolean, returns a Boolean, right? If you pass it false, you want it to return true. And if you pass it true, you want it to return false. So if we try that and we do not false, it returns true. And of course, if we do not true, it returns false. Perfect. This is what we thought. And this is basically what pattern matching is. It's just saying, well, the inputs, we can split them up into different types or not different types as in data types, but different types of inputs as in like, you know, if it's false, that's one type of input. If it's true, that's another type of input. You can also say, well, if we take a list, then that's one type of input. And if we take a list where it's slightly different, that's another type of input. Let's have a look at logic around. So first off with logic around, I've written a truth table for it. Logic around follows this truth table where the inputs are X and Y and the output is true. Essentially, X and Y have to both be true for the output to be true. In all of the cases, the output is false. So a better way of defining it, um, unlike what I did above, which I can quickly go back to here, you can see I've matched all four cases in the truth table, which is fine, but it's not the most concise way of doing it. But what I can do here, right, is I can just say, well, if the first input is true, then the output is dependent on what the second input is, because it's only true when both the inputs are true. So if the first input is true, then the output will depend on the second input, because if the second input is true, then it will be true. And if the second input is false, then it will be false. Therefore, you can just say, well, true and y is just y. But false, if the first um, if the first input is false, right, the output will be false because both need to be true for it to be true, which means you've already broken it. So we don't even really need to check what the second one is. And that's what this is. This is a placeholder, right? This is just saying we don't care what this variable is. It's just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the second variable is. The output's going to be false either way. And this is a much nicer way of defining the AND function. I will also say, um, with pattern matching, patterns are matched in order. So this will be matched first, then this. If you think of it like an if-else statement, you can say, well, if this, else if this, else if there was a third condition, and so on, right? It's not going to match this beforehand. So you need to keep that in mind. Let's have a look at all. So again, I've done the truth table. In this case, if either um, of the inputs are true or both of the inputs then the output is true because this is the logical inclusive or not exclusive so with inclusive or again we can pattern match and this is the type definition and again it's curried because it takes two inputs one at a time and returns an output which is they're all booleans right so if the first input is true then it doesn't matter what the second input is because it's going to be true either way and if the second input is true doesn't matter what the first input is, then the output will be true. And otherwise, this will have matched for the first input being true, i.e. x being true. This will have matched for y being true. And then if x is not true and y is not true, 
then we have the case here on line 55 where x is not true and y is not true, meaning q is not true, i.e. false. So in which case, we just say, it doesn't matter, the output will be false. This is kind of like, if the first one is uh, true, then it's true. Else, if the second one is true, then it's true. Else, or otherwise, it's false because neither of them are true by the time we got to this case because it's matched in order. This is matched, if not, this is matched, and then finally this will be matched. And this will match any case, right? Um, if I put this at the top, then what this will do is it will just match everything as false because every case will be something we don't mind and something we don't mind. As long as you pass it to inputs, it will match false, which is not what we want. So that's why ordering matters in pattern matching. Okay, so we've done some basic pattern matching examples. Let's have a look at pattern matching on tuples. So you can pattern match on anything. You can pattern match on integers, booleans, tuples, lists, any data type you want, you can pattern match on. Now, this is a basic AND function, right? Not AND, rather. This is a basic ADD function. It takes a tuple, which is, in this case, is a pair. It's a pair of integers, and then it returns an integer as a result. So it'll take x and y, and it'll decompose them from the pair, and then add them together. As you can see, it matches, right? It matches a pair, and that's how it takes the two inputs at the same time. This isn't curried, although technically it is. See my currying video for more information. But this, it takes a pair and it matches them as a pair. So that's what pattern matching looks like for a tuple. Let's have a look finally at a list. So with lists, you know, I've got two examples of what the head function. And what the head function does is its type definition says it takes a list of anything and returns anything. Um, if you're not familiar with this notation with the A's, then I do actually have a video on power metric polymorphism, which is what this is. But essentially what it's saying, and I'll be linked in the description, but essentially what I'm saying here for this line is that the list can be of anything, and all we care is we're going to return one of the elements from the list. And if you have a look here, what it says is it says, we're matching a non-empty list. We're matching a list where X is the first item, and then there's some other list, right? And then it will return X. And if we take that as this example, it returns one because this list is generated from one to three. If you haven't seen these dot dots, it just means give me every number between one and three. Um, if I just do the dots by themselves, I can explain what that, I can show you. So if I just do like one dot dot, dot dot five or something and I enter, it gives me a list of one to five, right? If I do one dot dot a hundred, this will be quite a big list. You can see though, it generates me a list of everything from one to a hundred. So that's what that does, right? I'll do one dot dot one. If I do one dot 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 one, well, it just gives me a list with one in. And this is actually important. So if you do head of say one dot 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 one, but instead of that, I can just do one, right? It will still work. Okay, maybe if I change the number, it'll be clear it still works. It will still work because this thing will now be the empty list because that's fine. Um, and there's actually a special thing with the cons operator where the number, I'll just write this here, it's a good side point, where the list 5 is equivalent to, this isn't Haskell syntax, this is just, you know, it's equivalent to 5 cons the empty list. And likewise, you know, 1 dot dot 3 is equivalent to 1 cons two cons, three cons, the empty list, uh, and that matches up the brackets, yeah. It's just a fun side note. I might do a video on this later, and if it is, I'll link that in the description. But that's just to say, you can still pattern match on the list with only one item in, which is interesting, I think. Okay, finally, oh, and I should say, the head just returns the first item of the list, no matter what items are in the list. And I'll just demonstrate that actually. So say this list was, you know, strings. Something like that, right? It should, re yeah, it returns hello, which is what you expect it to return. Finally, tail. This is another very simple example. You've seen head, now you can see tail. Tail just returns the rest of the list. You can see it's a very similar definition to um, head. And it's the same type definition because it takes a list 
And, oh, actually, I've just noticed that's not quite correct. It's not the same type definition because it returns a list. Head, will, oh, head returns a single value. Tail returns a list. So if I now run tail 1 to 3, it should return me 2 and 3 because it takes the rest of the list. So it essentially breaks off the head, which is the 1, and then returns the rest of the list. And I'll demonstrate this. If I did just this, right, it will still work, but it will now return an empty list. And my text editor is configured that an empty list returns nothing. But that's, that's what it is. It returns the rest of the list. Okay, well, that's, that's basically everything you need to know about pattern matching as an overview. There, there is more to pattern matching, um, and I recommend you look into it yourself. I think it's an interesting topic. If you have any questions about anything I've said in this video, or anything which this video has prompted you to think about, please leave a comment, like and subscribe as always. Thank you very much for watching.